If you decide to upgrade to the pro account in screencastomatic.com, you'll find that in addition to some new editing tools you can use after you record, you also get some drawing tools to use as you're recording. The draw button will appear right here and you can select this button. If you need to, you can pause the recording so that you can get your tools ready. But if you select the tool button, you'll see there's various options for which tool you want to use and they have a nice little keyboard shortcut built into each of them. So if you memorize these keyboard shortcuts, it will save you a whole lot of time. For example, if I switch slides here and I'm going to need to close the drawing tools to do that, so I'll hit escape. If I switch to the next slide and turn back on the drawing tools and hit the number one on my keyboard, I can freehand squiggle. If I hit number two, I get a straight line. If I hit the number three, I can use arrows to call attention to things. Number four gives me a square and five gives me a circle. So I can quickly annotate on the video as I'm making the video, erase everything. Again, when I'm done, I just hit escape and the drawing tools go away. That's the major difference you will see while recording with the Pro account. Most of the differences happen after you finish recording with the editing tools that you can access now. So I'll click done. Give my recording a name. And now I'll select the edit recording button. If I wanted to, I can immediately resize my video. So these were the dimensions the video was taken in. If I hit resize, I can use some of the presets to adjust its size or enter a custom dimension. I'll stick with the original for now and select done. And now let me talk about some of the different tools that you can use. These two little white bars that are at either end of the video are very significant. They'll control kind of what happens in between these bars. So if I start the play button here, for example, if I switch slides here. And if I wanted to edit out that beginning portion, I can take this first little white bar and drag it to the spot I want to get rid of. And if I use the trim around tool, it's going to delete everything that is in the lighter gray section. So I will trim that out. And that beginning portion is now gone. Similarly, if I find a goof kind of in the middle. To do that, so I'll hit escape. I can position these white bars, for lack of a better term, around just the area that is the goof. So within these bars would be the area I want to cut out. And instead of using trim around, I'll use the cut out option. If you wanted to hide your mouse for a portion of the video, again, you would do the same thing. You locate the area that you want to be affected by your edit, and then you choose the action over on the right. If I want to add in an additional video segment, I can. I simply just need to progress this video to where I want the new video to come in and I choose insert more. If I choose existing recording, I can pull up some of the other recordings I've already created or I'm going to go back and I'm going to choose insert more and I'll just make a new recording right now. So let me record just a tiny bit of this gray screen. Just recording a few seconds of that and I'll click done. If I go back to the very beginning of my video, I can see where it switches from the original video that I recorded to the gray segment. And then back again. If you want to add in additional text or annotations, you use what's called the overlay tool. So I'm going to select this tool right now. And I can decide if I want the text or images to play over this entire selection, which right now is the whole video, or just at the current time, which is what I'll select for, we'll say, 10 seconds. Then you choose the start button to get started and you have a variety of different overlays you can choose from. And the key over here on the right will help you understand what the buttons are on the toolbar. Unfortunately, they do not tell you what they are when you hover over them. So the first one is an image overlay. So I can select that option and I can choose an image right from my computer. And then I can resize this overlay and kind of put it where I would like it to be on the canvas. I do also have the ability to animate the overlay. So if you select the A button, in your timeline, you'll have an A for animation start, and then you can play, stop the video where you want the animation to stop. So if I want it to kind of move over here, then I just drag the image over there, and that's where the animation's going to stop. I can go back to the first A, and if I choose this arrow button, it means the image will slide from one position to the other instead of just disappearing and reappearing. I'll click done and preview to see what it looks like. So that's what an animated overlay looks like. I can go back and I can also just copy images right from the internet, which is kind of handy. So I have some pictures of dogs here 
There's a cute one. I'll copy this guy and go back into the screen Castomatic Pro Editor. Choose the Add Overlay option again at the current time. Choose Start. And now I'll just hit Control V on my keyboard. And it says to scale the image in the clipboard so it fits the recording. Sure, I'll say yes. It must be a very large image. And then I can shrink down the image size of that cute little puppy dog. I can also add in rectangle image overlays, so I can draw a rectangle that will appear over items in my recording. Same thing, you have arrows that you can draw that will appear. And when I'm finished, I'll click Done. I'm going to skip ahead in my video and show you how you might use a few other of the overlay options. So let me go in and add an overlay here. For this one, I will use the add a dimming overlay, which is nice because it allows you to really direct attention to one area of the screen. So I will select this tool on the toolbar and draw a rectangle around that portion of the screen that I want my viewers to really focus on for a little bit. So I'll select done. If you want to edit any of your overlays, they're in your history panel that shows over here on the right and you can select it and delete it and reinsert it if you need to make any adjustments. There also might be times where you want to zoom in on certain areas of your video. So again, you'll use these white and black buttons down on the toolbar to focus on the portion of the video where you want to zoom in. So during this portion of the video, I want the zoom to increase so we can read the screen a little bit better. Once I've adjusted the segment to my satisfaction, I'll just click zoom and pan. I have the option for screencast-o-matic to just kind of follow the mouse around, but I like to manually set the zoom, click start and you'll get a zoom box within your preview box on the lower right. And you can adjust the zoom here. You'll see on the preview how it changes. So I'm gonna zoom way in and then adjust it over to the side so that we are really focused in on the word survey view. When you're happy with that, click done. And here's what it looks like. It's a pretty choppy transition between the two scales, but there is one way you can zoom in if you need to on your videos. You can take a look and try out some of the additional tools on the toolbar, like increasing the speed change if you want to speed up a portion of your video. You can add in transitions. When you select transitions, it lets you know where you can put in a transition. So you can always put a transition in at the beginning and the end, and then you can do transitions at any of the cuts or the inserts that you've made. So there are limited areas where you can put in a transition. But if you wanted one at the beginning, simply click where that transition is indicated in this list. You can change the transition color to anything that you would like. And when you're done, just select add transition. Now when my video starts, it will be black and will fade into my image. When you're all finished editing, just choose the done button. My changes have been saved. And from here I can upload right to YouTube or to my Google Drive account or to screencastomatic.com. If I go back to my recordings list, I can see my existing clips and I can pull my clips open if I wish to edit them additionally. So that's how you can use the Screencast-O-Matic Pro version to annotate your videos as you're making them or to edit them after you're finished.